All right, family, that was good. Everybody pray the most high through songs, through psalms, and their own that. Hams. That was good. It's morning after that thing. You gonna join us next time, brother? You gonna join us next time? <laughs> Praise the most high. Well, as always, we're gonna start this Sabbath off by being thankful, showing our thanks, giving to the most high higher, by Hashem Yasha or Wakadash. That's the, the Most High's name, Ahaya. Yasha is the Savior's name, our Lord and Savior. Wawak Kadash is the name of the Holy Spirit. We always thank the Most High for giving us the breath that we breathe, but it's their life. There's, there's many people who our of necessity has come to pass. So we thank Him for His mercy, for His grace. For giving us the opportunity to get it right this day. With that, the water system. Perfect. Everything good? Okay. Today, the Most High has given us another lesson. It's kind of piggybacking off last week's lesson when we went into uh, Christianity. Um, today's title is Proving Christianity is Blasphemy and Not of God. Last week, we uh, went through the, uh, world, the, 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 the world's great religion book. And we mentioned some things about what what uh, Christian, Christianity is, is founded on. But we didn't go through the scriptures uh, to prove the foundation false. Okay? Today we're going to do that. But, what I want to start off with um, is we, those who are us who are in no coming to class, we are very familiar with what I'm about to say. This is the only generation where, where the where the government has deceived the people so thoroughly that the people believe that there's only one God, right? You know, that's why it's easier for, for people who's outside um, in these religions to say, that, no, no, pray for me. No, I lost my loved one, pray for me. Well, if they had knowledge of the true God, you would be very careful of that because all people do not serve the same God. As the Bible says, there's many gods, but there's only one true God, the creator of the gods, okay? His name is Ahaya Shor Ahaya, okay? In English, is I am, okay? In Hebrew, it's Ahaya. So, I wanna, we got a lot of information today as always, um, but what I wanna do I'm going to paraphrase a lot of this, okay? So I'm going to start off saying the, the precept. I'm going to say what it says. We don't got to turn there just for the sake of time, okay? But as last week, we started off, I think, um, no, we didn't start off the scripture, but we got to it. Matthew chapter 24, verse five, 4 and 5 states that the Messiah is saying, is warning us that in the last days, there will be a great deception called Christianity, right? He said, many will come in, in, in my name deceiving many. And we talked about that last week. So those who are in the audience, I beg you to go back um, to our YouTube channel, Awakening of a High, Awakening of High Intellect Church, and watch the videos. Because there's a lot of valuable information from the videos the Most High has provided for us. But primarily for you out in the audience. Okay? This gospel must be spread through the four corners of the earth. And then the end will come. The end of this Roman Empire. And the kingdom of Jacob will be established. Okay? Um, Matthew chapter 13, write this down too. I want y'all to read this. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 through 30. Yasha is crit criticizing the religious leaders of his time. In the Bible, they're called Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees. That's just three sex sets of religion, but there's many more at that time. But the Pharisees were those who proclaimed to teach the law. And Messiah was really quoted from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23. He said, woe to you, it says, woe to you pastors. He was saying, woe to you Pharisees, you scribes, you Sadducees, you hypocrites. Right? So I want y'all to read that. But what I, would, what I beg for everyone to really consider, because many go to church and never consider what 
Yahshua or the Messiah is trying to portray. He's giving you valuable information. He's dropping jewels. He's letting you know that the fight is against the religious leaders who have scattered his sheep because they have not fed them. When Messiah came, he says that they were not teaching the doctrine of his God correctly. He said, because you have replaced the laws of God. You laid aside the laws of God and replaced them with your traditions. So because of that, they make the, the, the audience, those who are trying to find and those who are trying to learn how to properly worship the Most High, they make you twice the child of hell because they're not getting the kingdom nor are they giving you the way to the kingdom. And the sad thing about it is the people that I'm talking about are the children of Israel. As I sit in the ghetto in Saginaw, Michigan, surrounded by a bunch of people who are lost, downtrodden as the scriptures prophesied, this continued in our heritage. Our heritage is the law of the Most High God, the God of the Hebrews, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of their seeds. That's us in America, the so-called Negro, your Israelite, the so-called North Americans, Indians. You are a child of Israel. The so-called Mexicans, you're a child of Israel. The laws was given to us as an inheritance, inheritance and a heritage. The way of life. So I'm starting off this way because my heart bleeds for my people. We're starting off with Christianity and we're talking about the religious leaders because you claim to be a servant of the Most High but you're not on a basic level telling the people who come to your churches and pay you every Sunday and all the other weekdays that, that y'all meet up. First and foremost, who they are. It's very important to know who you are. If you know who you are, what do you know? If you read this Bible without the knowledge of self, this is only a book. And like, I was having a conversation with someone this morning. If you read this book, this Bible, this holy, wonderful, truthful, living water filled, this book that's filled with living water, that means the spirit of the most high. You can easily say that this is a white man's book because that's what they have programmed us to believe because you don't know who you are. So when you see these white people over in Israel in our land, you associate them with the Bible, or the Bible calls them the synagogue of Satan, the children of the devil. But this book right here, truthfully, and I'm not, again, I'm not apologizing for the truth, but what I will say, for all those that have an ear to hear the spirit of the Most High Hyam, have an ear to hear. This is no offense, but I'm talking to my people right now first because the, the, the commandment is to the Jew first and then the Gentile. So I'm informing my people who are the real Jews. The Bible says that the Gentiles have always been considered nothing. But you think it's talking about you because you've been trained and programmed to believe that you're a Gentile and that you're nothing but a slave. You're the apple of the Most High's eye. Everything in this world has been designed against you to keep you in darkness, alienated you, alienating you from your God, from your Creator. And what we're about to get into today, you're a product of this blast from me. And it's sad when I hear my people in the state right now, especially these young ones, and it's really irritating and hurtful when an adult proclaim that there's no such thing of a God. 
That hurts. That hurts. But what I want to do is get into this because we're talking about the religious leaders. So I want to do the spirit of the most high. I beseech you all to listen to the words. Put yourself there. Okay? To show you that Satan has always had ministers against the most high. Even though the people believed there was the ministers of God. Now, we're going to get your story dealing with the prophet Elijah. Strong brother. Hey. Love that brother. Strong brother, fighter for the, for the truth. A servant of the most high. I'm going to give you a little backdrop on the story where there's this wicked woman named Jezebel. And her spirit still dominates today. That's why you see these women in these churches, these women leading schools, these women leading everything because the spirit of Jezebel dominates this world. The most high used men, Satan used women to fulfill his will. The most high said his flock is of men. For all the women who think you're supposed to be a pastor, you blaspheme the most high God. Because you can't find one priest and the servants of God went to the Levitical bloodline. The bloodline of Levi. Men, not one of his daughters was ever a priest. So don't twist the words up or, or, or wrongfully divide the word of God to fit yourself in the Bible to make yourself justified. A woman should cannot teach nor pray the most high words over a man. She can pray all she wants to to the most high God. She's, a, she's his daughter. But a woman cannot pray over a man. Nor can a woman teach as I'm teaching right now over men. The spirit of Jezebel is what that is. So Jezebel had, had tried to eradicate the most high's true prophets. But Obadiah, we got a brother here named Obadiah. It's a runner that you came today. <laughs> Most I used him to hide a hundred of his true prophets in a cave. In caves. He did about fifties. Two sets of fifties. I told you I was going to say something about Obadiah. They forgot that. It was in the lesson. All praise to the Most High for bringing you in the presence of the Spirit. But the world hated Elijah because he went against the world. Right? Because the world was never serving the Most High God. So he went and spoke the words of the Most High God. And he destroyed people and prophets in, under the command of the Most High. Okay? So the world hated him because he was not one to bow down to a king, to a king, or no man, or no spirit. Okay? He's a great example for us to follow today. So we have a, cloud, a great cloud of witnesses of righteous, faithful men and women. Okay? So let's get it. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21 and 22. Son. Once again, that's 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 21 and 22. I know what I need you to do. I need you to put the strong support in this too. Oh, I got the east order. Anybody there? No. It's fine. First Kings, 
chapter 18, verse what, 20, what I say, 22, 23? 21. 21. Let's go. The one thing I need to write down, I, I didn't write on this thing right here, but I'm going to paraphrase it. Let's go. Verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long hold ye between two opinions? How long would you have a difference of opinion? Right? Kind of like Joshua. To choose today who you're going to serve. Okay? How long are you going to have this difference of opinion? And that's the, what, what, why I'm so adamant about this Christian thing. And, and hopefully most times allow me to talk about them, these Muslims too. Okay, because you're no different than, than these Christians. You've been deceived as well. And I want to do a lesson so bad in that. I pray the most high allow me to. But today, because of what the Roman Catholic Church has established, our people believe that we have what's called freedom of religion. Well, the most high never gave us freedom of religion. Your government did. Okay? Most high says he put life and death before you. That's not freedom of religion, okay? And Most High never gave us a religion. He gave us a way of life, right? Put the blessings of life before you, curses and death before you. So, light is saying, choose one. So, let's listen to who our people was serving at the time and has always served, okay? Let's get it. If a higher be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. Baal, right? See, in biblical times, it's called Baal. That's the golden calf that Satan caused Aaron to formulate. Well, Baal is the God of prosperity, right? Baal is Jehovah. I had the information. I didn't write it down. I wanted to, I wanted to it's on my phone, but my phone is recording. So I can't get that, so I'm going to paraphrase it, right? You got it? Is this it? No. Because you, cause, cause you have to dig into it because they'll trick you right there. Okay. Right? Well, Jah or Yah means God. Hova means the fallen one. God of perverseness. Very wickedness. Perverseness. So Satan is, or Yahweh, same demon. Yahweh, Baal, Belium, Jehovah. Jabalon, they all the same demonic spirit. Satan. Okay? So, how long was you going to serve Satan? If the most high be God? Because Elijah is about to contest these false prophets to show who's serving the true God. So I, I, I beg you all to read the whole chapter 18. I can't go through it for sake of time, but let's keep going. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Most High. See, I, even I only remain a prophet. So Elijah thinking that he's the last prophet left. Okay? Let's go. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. See, it's always been more of Satan's prophets than the Most High's. But what Elijah did not know that Obadiah had protected through the Spirit of the Most High a hundred of the true prophets. Okay? So I just want to, I'm trying to read that whole chapter so you'll see the whole story of what I'm saying. But but Elijah's about to show up with the, with the Most High Spirit. He actually mocks these false gods that his people are serving. Because they can't do nothing. They have hands, can't touch nothing. Mouth, can't speak. Feet, can't walk. You have to, you have to, you have to make them then Stand them in the position and then bow down to it. They guys, like most I said, the guys of the Gentiles are idols, devils. And when I say, when, when the highest says they're, they're idols, that's not the actual God. Their guys are living, but they cause them to make them formulate something with their hands to worship an, an idol, something that they know is against the commandments of the Most High. Because thou should not make any graven images of anything in heaven, on earth, or under the sea, or in the sea, under the earth. So the demons know how to convince mankind to rebel against the Most High. Right? So they always fashion with their hands a God. 
but that guy is not doing anything because the guy they're serving is tricking them in their mind, causing them to think contrary to the Most High's laws, but they're giving homage to an image. Okay, so it's because it's a dumb idol. Don't mean that you know that guy don't exist. But let's go. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter twenty-three. I'm just going to shoot through this real fast because I want to get to the, you know, to the meat. But for sake of time, we're going to just breeze through this thing and hope everybody catch on to it. If not, raise your hand. Stop me. Ask a question. The one for the coffee, my sister. We're going to do verse 1 through 4 and 9 through 32. Let's get it. Yep. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastors, said the Most High. So it's not me speaking ill, Ill towards the, 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 these pastors. It's the Most High. I'm just reciting his words. So don't get offended at me. You get offended at the Most High God for exposing you. I wish and pray that, you know, you learn the truth. And teach the truth. Uh, I was talking to a brother a couple of days ago, and I said, you know, I would love, that's in Saginaw, because since y'all pastors want to have a conversation about me, I would love for us to sit down and break bread and go over precepts, go over doctrine in the Bible. And you can keep your members. I don't you know, those members belong to Christ. Them belong to me. Uh, but I would love for us to have a dialogue, even though I know this is, you know, a one in a million chance, if it is, maybe one of y'all out of a thousand will listen and learn and teach your church the truth. Get them back into the true Sabbath. Stop going on Satan's Day, on the first day of the week. We're going to get into all this today. Cast away the lies and learn truth and teach the truth. Because that's the whole duty of us. To bring our people back to the God of the Hebrews. So it, this this is not a this is not I have no mass in my heart towards no one. The, what fills my heart is the desire for Jacob to come back to our God. No matter how what shape, fashion, or form it happens, save your souls. So if y'all watch these videos, learn, take notes, and teach your church the truth. Get out of Christian Dome. Get out of Mystery Babylon. Okay? It's Satan's. But let's go. Verse 2. Therefore, thus saith Ahia, God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, said Ahia. You scattered them from your false doctrines. Because your false doctrines and your ill conduct. You drive them away. Because most of y'all are some fornicators. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Y'all not doing none of the law so, hey, like I say all the time, ask the leader, ask the people. So if the leader is lawless, what do you expect the people to, to, uh -huh. to be? If the leader is, is you know, giving the scripture sin, what do you think, the, you, know, you think Israel going to want to do right? Why do you think the Messiah calls a sheep? Listen, do your research on what a sheep is. We are just like sheep. Just like sheep. But that's why our people are so lost because our leaders have a doctrine from these Romans commanding us to be lawless. So they ain't. They, hey. You know, you think it might have an option to do right or wrong? You know, <laughs> which one thing they gonna choose? You know, if you know these young men who've been programmed to be uh, promiscuous, and these women, young women, went old and young. You know, be one man or one woman or multiple. If the pastor tell them they can have multiple, you think they're going to choose one? 
But if the if the pastor say no, no fornicator should inherit God's kingdom. You have one wife. You have one husband. See the difference? But you know when he says you know no Lord will, no Lord will, will, will forgive you. You know now you believe that you can you know sin tonight, pray tonight, and the Most High has forgiven you. And then tomorrow you do the same thing. Not according to the Bible. But let's go. Verse three. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whether I have driven them, and will bring them again to their foes, and they shall be now, fruitful. I, I wasn't going here, but that just sparked the spirit. Because last week we mentioned about this flea doctrine, which we once believed in. Think why I was ready to go to Egypt three, four years ago. Yes. Told my wife, my mom, and my, and my daughter, hey, if y'all ain't ready to come, hey, I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? Sears and heart attack, I was gone. But most I stopped me and put me in the ministry. That's why I always had told them people, this was not of my doing. Me being in the ministry was the farthest thing I wanted to do. I had already, I made the do the paperwork in a minute. I wait for get the paperwork ready. Gone. First plane spoken, I was going to be on. Most I said, no, go out and talk to my people. But the Most High just said, read that script, scripture again. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whether I have driven them. Most High said that he would gather his people. To what? Out of all countries. All countries. See, we love to say flee Babylon. Babylon's not the whole world. See? The Most High would gather us. That don't mean that miraculously the Most High going, you know, through the cash app, send us some money to buy a plane ticket. You get it? One day wake up, team. I got five hundred dollars for a plane ticket. You got email. You got you got a flight to Egypt. You got a flight to Israel, right? I know I'm making fun of this, but for real though, think about it. The Most High said He would gather us, and then the Messiah said He would send His angels to gather us. So that's how He's going to gather us from the four corners of the earth. See, I was been over Egypt trying to figure out what to do. Right? Right. Over there with people looking at me like, ain't y'all time yet? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they know who we are. They know that the Messiah would bring us home. And oh, before I get farther what I'm about to say, Egypt, we're not from Egypt. Egypt was originally called Mesraim. But Egypt, truthfully, is a part of the land of Israel. Okay? It was given to our father, Shem, his brother, son, Canaan, stole our land. Okay? So we're not Egyptians. So don't get it twisted what I just said. I don't want to confuse nobody. Okay? But the Most High would gather us from the four corners of the earth because he said this would be Jacob's trouble and Jacob would be broke. Serving his masters in the foreign land. Serving other guys. So you're a servant, you're a slave. How you afford to this, you know, everybody? Because, like, it's real talk. For all y'all think y'all Negroes, y'all Hebrews, okay? Look around your people. How many of them can, can buy a plane ticket and, and, and fly out of here? How many of them can get a passport, let alone a ticket? Our people are just ran over foot. Trotting down. So, and again, I'm going to say this for the last time. Nope, I can't lie. I, I might say it five minutes, so I ain't going to say it, but I'm going to say it again. You know, one of us buying a plane ticket does not glorify the Most High. Because Most High said that he'll be glorified when he do this thing, this strange thing like he did, in, you know, us come out of the land of Egypt. But there's no such thing of a flea doctrine. We've we done that. Y'all get a Zephaniah and all, all that stuff. We done that already. This is, the, like I said, this is the grand finale. Right? This ain't the time of Moses. Ain't the time of Joshua. Okay? It's the time of the Messiah. Okay? It's his time. He goes to his angels and give him a charge and gather the wheat from the tares. Okay? Not this in some little locale. The Bible says through the four corners of the earth. So that has to mean that Israel is still... When this goes down, 
spread out throughout the whole world. So let's keep going. I'm sorry. But yeah, I'm just, hey, let's get it. Continue with verse 3. And I will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith Ahijah. Now, the most high in the last days will set up shepherds. See, because these ones that he's gathering, these are the ones who have been reprogrammed with the truth. Okay? His shepherds have the heart of the most high. They're teaching the true gospel of the most high. Okay? So the past the, the pastor, not the pastor, but I said the I said the pastor are the obedient sheep who listen to the pastor or shepherd who get them back to the law of the commandments. Because most of the flock is still doing what they want to do. Because their pastor gave a mission to. Them. Okay? Well, let's go. Jumping down to verse 9. And it reads, Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome. Now, y'all, remember I said that my heart bleeds for Israel? This is what Jeremiah is saying. His heart is broken because of the prophets. So it's not, I'm not, it hurts to see our people because the Messiah said that the blind is leading the blind. So all the pastors don't know. But there's some of y'all who know the truth. And y'all are in it for the hustle, for the money. Like the Bible says you're in it for filthy lucre's sake. But there's a lot of pastors who just don't know. And if you're one of them, come learn from the waking of a high elect church. I promise you, the spirit of the Most High is in the midst of us. Sure. Let's get it. And like a man whom wine hath overcome because of a higher and because yep. of the it's, a, it's a hangover feeling. But let's go. Because of a higher and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers. Is it not? Is the land not full of adulterers? Yeah. Tomorrow, the church will be filled with a bunch of adulterers. The pastor is an adulterer. Because the Most High is pointing out the main problem. It's the leaders. You have scattered his flock. And you have led, you driven a lot of them away where they don't even have faith anymore. They don't believe that it's a God because of you. Because you hold up a Bible, you know, and sit it on, on your pulpit. Which one thing? The th pulpit? The podium. You know. Don't mean and they got a cross on their chest, which is against the most high idolatry. Don't mean these people are men of God. The most high is pointing them out. And this is nothing new. This has been going on since the beginning of sin. Long time. People wonder why there's so many different religions. Well, all religions are under the, the umbrella of Satan. What we're doing right now is, I promise you, it's not a religion. The Most High never brought religion to the earth. He said he formed Adam and gave him a counsel on how he should live. That's not religion. When you have children and teach them right from wrong, is that a religion? But most high have children and taught them how to live. Where was we must go? That's not religion. We're not teaching religion. We're teaching the law, steps, commandments of our God, our higher, sure, higher. Okay, so all religion is under the umbrella of Satan. But let's get it. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing, the land mourning. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea. Both prophet and priest are profane. See? That's why the land's full of adultery. Again, we're looking at the, 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 the product of the leaders. But let's go. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness. In his house have he found their wickedness, see? 
The Most High is pointing this out. He commands us to point it out. Let's go. Saith the Hyatt, Wherefore, their ways shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. As slippery ways in the darkness. Imagine being on a slippery floor in the darkness. Everybody falling. Stumbling on everything. This boom. That's what our people are doing. Each man to his own way. Boom. Hit the flow. The problem is, what you're really going to hit, you don't want to hit that. Because those ways that you have been taught to, to operate is leading you to the pit. Whether you believe the pit is literal or not, Messiah going to let us know today that it's literal. Okay? It's called hell. The Messiah says that it was created for Satan and his angels. Hell was originally created for Satan and his angels. And the Bible says because men want to follow him, hell has enlarged herself. So Satan has his ministers guiding the whole world straight to the pit because he hates you. He got you loving yourself so much that you're confused. In the, it's about you loving the most high. Being thankful that he gave you breath. You think you just, you just woke up this morning by chance? All weekend, it's been funerals all over the world. Every day, somebody's dying. Hell is still enlarging itself to receive her people. It's facts. We're going to get into to, to all, we're going to break down the, the, the fundamental doctrines of Christianity today and show you how it's a bunch of confusion. But let's get it. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For they should be driven on. So if you're driven on, what's that mean? Ran over. Your oppressors are running over you. Running over you. Abusing you. And you don't even know. You think you just a, a, no, a sidewalk or a street. You a precious vineyard that's not supposed to be trodden down or ran over. You're the vineyard of the Most High. Rick. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the higher. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal. See, serving Satan. But those who believe, that, see, um, see, this is biblical time. They didn't believe that if there's one God. The Most High is showing you there's more than one God. Because his people, the priests and the prophet, had gone astray. And serving Satan. And when they serve Satan, he says, Look at what you have done. The whole land is full of adulterers, lawless people. No direction. Because when they when they go to the guide, he tells them, Well, it's okay if you go that way. It's okay if you go that way. It's all about you. You do what you want to do. See, Elijah said, How long you have two differences of opinion? The Most High don't change. He say, do this. So a true prophet of the Most High would say, you do thus says the Most High. Because the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. Follow not your heart. Because only fools follow their heart. Because guess what the Bible says about that, treasure, that precious heart of yours that y'all say that God knows so much. It it's wicked uh. and it's treacherous. Uh. Who can know it? It's wicked, treacherous. So if a person who has a wicked heart, even though you think you're a good person, the Bible says you have a wicked heart. So if a pastor tells you you can do wickedly, what do you think you're going to do? That's why you're wicked, because you're not following the Bible. That's right. Let's get it. They prophesied in Baal. And caused my people Israel to err. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem 
and horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. Walk in lies. We're going to get to the root of, the, of, of the, the liars. Let's go. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none do return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto... They, they, they strengthen the hand of the evildoers. That's why these pastors are paid so well. They strengthen the, the, their hands. Right? They strengthen their hands. And let's go. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. I thought God loved everybody. God's got love. The Most High said all these people who are not following his laws to him are like Sodom and Gomorrah. If you don't know about Sodom and Gomorrah, Google it. His evidence is still there to this day. Sodom and Gomorrah was a, 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 a district with five different cities. It wasn't just Sodom and Gomorrah. It was five other cities as well. Right? Full of adulterers. Sodomites. Wicked men and women. If y'all don't know this, I think like quarterly, they had these big old festivals. Whole week festivals. The men and the women and their children. If y'all think swinging is something, this was the biggest swing party of all time. Because the daughters was with whoever, and the little boys was too. All week long, they committed the most heinous acts you can think of. So it wasn't that they were just homosexuals. They used to set up people who came into their land. They would give them money and it was a law that no one could sell to them. They would starve them out and rob them and kill them. America and these other countries are very similar. Speaking about starving somebody, it's against the law in a lot of places to feed a homeless person. That's why the Bible said this is Solomon Moore the Great. Solomon Moore the Great. The spiritual Egypt. Right? The land of captivity. Right? It's Solomon. The land of that's led by sodomites. Think we're lying? Turn on the TV. But let's go. Verse 15. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood. He will feed them with wormwood. Bitterness. That's why the people go to church and can't learn nothing. The Bible said that these prophets, these pastors, are famished. How can you go to somebody who's famished and get nourishment? I had a brother, uh, sister come last week or something and said, no, a couple weeks ago, said she learned so much in the course of three hours. People go to church all their life and still can't figure out what they learn. I promise y'all, y'all leave every day, you're going to learn something. And those who watch it, you're going to learn something. This is this is the Holy Sabbath. It's a holy convocation. We won't get into that today, but I'm going to just put the cart before the horse and see it. A holy convocation is a gathering, a assembling of God's people where there's edification. Right? That's learning. So the Sabbath is the day that you're supposed to go to church. The Sabbath is the seventh day. Saturday. Sunday is the first day. And we're going to get to that as well. The Romans changed the Sabbath in 321 AD from Saturday to Sunday. So if you're going to church tomorrow, you're following the Romans. You're following Baal. You're following Yahweh. You're following Jehovah. You're following Yah, you're following Jah, you're following whatever name you want to put on it, but a higher, sure, higher. You're following Satan. Let's go. And make them drink the water of gall. Poison. 
for from the prophets of Jerusalem is profane is gone forth into all the land. See, that's why the Bible calls the Roman Catholic Church the mother of harlots. All abominations. It's not America. Not saying that it's not talking about America because it is in other cases. But it's the prophets who are controlled by the whore that spreads all the abominations as we just read right here. Read. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the word of the prophets. Hearken prophet not God. into the mouths of these liars. Get out of Christianity. Read. That prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart. They make you vain. Are you not vain? Yeah. It's all about you. Yeah. You're a bunch of adulterers who worship yourselves by default. You become an idol. You put yourself before the most high, which is really antichrist. Your behavior, your mindset is antichrist. The Messiah said that you won't stand a chance if you don't pick up your cross with me and disown yourself and follow him. So how can you put yourself before the most high God? Because the Bible says that a proper man would not receive reproach. I mean, reproof. So you won't listen to this because it's more important to do what you want to do than to submit yourself to the Messiah. Because these prophets have made you vain. They have led you to believe in your own imaginations. What's the last part that you read, brother? Right here. They speak a vision of their own heart. They speak a vision of their own heart. Now tell me this ain't true. Tomorrow, we say it's every other Sabbath. They speak a vision of their own heart. They pick and choose a couple of scriptures out of the Bible and give you a vision of their own heart. They give you their own interpretations. They give you a whole life story you know, about them or her or this person or that person. And it has really nothing to do with what the Bible is actually saying. I mean, how do you come up with some of these, you know, scenarios baffle me. I'm like, the Bible ain't talking about that. You know, they pick out something in Jeremiah, I'm like, they ain't what they're saying. You know, three hours, two hour sermon. Then they come to singing in, you know, in the, you know, in the trade pass around about three or four times. You know, but let's go. And not out of the mouth of a hyper. They say still unto them that despise me, the most high hath said, ye shall have peace. And that and they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. That's what they're doing right now. They're telling you that you should have peace. No evil shall come upon you. The blood of Jesus cover you. That's what they're saying. The blood of Jesus covers you from your wickedness. It does not. The blood of the Messiah only covers you if you're obedient and you sin no more. On his own mouth. Repent and sin no more. Then his blood should cover you. If you continue in your sin, there's a greater damnation waiting for you. It says in, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 to 31, he who despised both of the law died, under, well, died without mercy under two or more witnesses. Uh, how much sorrow upon me you suppose ye is thought worthy who trodden under the foot the Son of God and done it in the spite of the Spirit of grace. It's worse now. See, the pastors are telling you you have peace, that there's no evil come upon you. You're going to hell ah. if you continue on the path that you're in. You have to leave these pastors and come back to the law of seven commandments. We in the last days, y'all. I mean, the, hour, the, 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 the hourglass is like that. It ain't that much sand in that glass anymore. You don't have time for foolishness. The grace that he had given you when you woke up this morning, it's time for you to hear this word and repent. Learn who the God of the Hebrews, the God of all things is. And serve him. Read. 
they say still unto them that despise me. No, Salaki, verse 18. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Most High and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his voice and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of Ahia is gone forth in fury. Even a grievous whirlwind, it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Most High shall not return until he hath executed, until he hath performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. That's what Most High said. If these were like 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 uh, Yasha says, by the fruit, by their fruit, you should know them. Most High said, if they, if they was of Him. And spoke his words, he would have turned the people from their wickedness into his laws. And our communities, our people would not be functioning as they're functioning. When we heard the word of truth, we transformed our life. And now we're serving the most high, just like as we serve Satan. Yeah, it was shocking for us to believe that when we found out all thing, everything we was taught was a lie. But we didn't wallow in the you know. In the confusion, we learn who the Most High God is, and, and, and not we don't follow. We don't use our vessels as vessels as of unrighteousness, but as vessels of righteousness now. That's right. See, so when you hear the truth, it's going to convert you, or you're going to deny it and continue in your own ways. So if our pastors was actually doing this, it'd be a lot more transformation going on in our communities. Right. But you see the fruit of their works. Read. Verse 23. Am I a God at hand, said the higher, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, said the Most High? Do not I fill heaven and earth, said the Most High? I have heard what the prophet said that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I dream, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. That sound about saying that sound familiar? Who that? I have a dream. That one day. See? Hey, this is prophecy, y'all. Right? That dream he had was not of the most high. Okay? But the most high is calling them all out. Okay? Well, let's go. Verse 26. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. They are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Read. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams. See? Which they tell. See how we forgot his name? Because the prophets was prophesying under the name or God of Baal. Just like you're doing right now. Jehovah. And all these other names, Yo, Yehoadai and, and Yehuda and Yah. Yah and all this stuff. That's not his name. Yah is God. That's Elohim. That's not a name. That's a title. Right? So now because of the false prophets, they come with the name of their gods. Most High has one name. The name he gave Moses, the Haida. Okay? But let's go which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. Again, so when y'all see Yahweh on these television shows and these YouTube channels, when the archaeologists who found this rock that said Yahweh, the Most High is telling you, that's who our people were serving. Yeah. That'll mean that, again, again, for the thousandth time, that'll mean that that's the true name of God, that some man found the rock with Yahweh inscribed on it. Oh, the Most High is telling you what our people were doing during that time when they put that on that rock. Serving Yahweh, Jehovah, or Yahweh, or who you want to call him, Baal. Let's go. Verse 28. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream, mm -hmm. and he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the shaft to the wheat? said the higher. 
is not my word like as a fire? So he said, let them, if you want to go, props out the seat, go ahead. Because his word is like fire. His sheep know his voice. His work is being done. Can't nothing stop the work and the will of the Most High. In the midst of all this madness, all this confusion, his Jews are changing their lives and coming to him. That's why it says, a remnant shall be saved. And broad and spacious is the road lead up to destruction. Because they're going to keep on prophesying their deceit according to their own heart. But the most high word will penetrate the hearts of those who will submit themselves to him and appreciate him and worship him in spirit and truth. Read. It's not my word like as a fire, says the most high, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, says the high, that steal my word, every one from his neighbor. See, they steal his word. So he used a couple of scriptures and put their own understanding behind it. That's why you have so many books trying to teach you what the Bible is saying. Which we're going to get into that to, to today too. Right? Matter of fact, let, no, let's keep going. Behold. So when the pastor is giving his own interpretation, he's doing it with most high, he's doing what most high call a false way. Okay? Man. Let's go. Verse 31. Behold, I am against the prophets, said the high, that use their tongues and say, he said, behold, I am against them. So when they say, I think, it's what he said. It's what he think. It's not what the most high said. If you go to your pastor and ask him a question, he get his own opinion, the most high just called them out. Ah. Forgive him. Let's go and get him. Can you finish 32? Get him. Behold, I am against them that pro prophesy false dreams, said the high, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all. So these prophets, these pastors, will not profit his people at all. And that's why I said, the Messiah said, by their fruit you should know them. They have not profited our people at all. What have they done for you? You, keep, you continue to, put, to associate money with profit. The Messiah said, what, what profit is it if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? How do they profit you? You're still living and don't even know it as an enemy to the Most High. You're an enemy to the Most High. Believe he loves you. Because these prophets have spoken from their own heart, not the words of the Most High. It's plain and simple. If the Most High says it, get, get uh, uh, First John, I think it's 5 2. He says that the love of God is that you keep his commandments. 5 3. Five, five, three. So it's not about what your pastor said, the Most High said. If you love him, you will keep his commandments. Read that real quick. First John chapter 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not greedy. And guess what? The Messiah is in heaven on the right hand of, the, of, of his God and Father right at this time. Mm -hmm. We're going to get into that immaculate birth and Trinity stuff in a little while. But after Christ had died and was resurrected, the Bible is saying keep the commandments. Wow, isn't that a thought? Okay? But let's get to this own heart thing. In Isaiah 28, verse 9 and 10, it says, So when, when their pastor is teaching you, this is what the Most High, this is the way the Most High commands them to teach. Whom shall I teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And now, we're going to get into this doctrine because the Baptists don't have no formal doctrine. I'm going to read it out of that same book, the world's religion, and read their doctrine, or read their beliefs. Okay? And whom shall I make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be on precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So when you go to a pastor and ask them a question, they should be giving you precepts, scriptures, to ask your question, not their own opinion. Because the Bible says there's no prophecy of, is of any private interpretation. It's the most highest word over man. 
and this to back that up. Let's get this right here. Uh, I'm gonna go to um, no. Um, Psalms 119, 104 reads. Thou has commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. See, the Most High has commanded us to keep his commandments diligently. A precept is a commandment. The book is full of commandments. Okay? It says, uh, 108, it says, wait, 114. Wait, 104. It says, through thy precepts I get understanding. See, it's through the precepts of God that we get understanding, not from man. Therefore, I hate every false way. A false way is man giving you his opinion. A false way is all those books they done sold y'all to interpret God's words. Okay? Here's, a, here's a, uh, another one. 119, 104. 119, 128 reads, Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts. See, a true prophet of the Most High, a true servant of the Most High, will esteem all his precepts. Not tell you that the precepts are done away. Okay? Concerning all things to be right. See, it's the precepts that makes all things right. So you have a question. You go to your pastor, they must give you precept on precept to establish the matter. Okay? Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Okay? People have gotten rich of these books of confusion. Okay? But let's go. Let's get it. Next precept? No, let's, uh, let's, I don't know. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 11. Y'all read down to 32. We're going to keep it pushing. Second, did we? Oh, great. Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse thirteen hey, to fifteen. Be the spirit, girl. Second Corinthians, we say. Chapter eleven, verses thirteen through fifteen. Let's get it. And it reads, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. See. They transform themselves to be an apostle of the Messiah, of Yahshua. They're not. They're false teachers. If they're not doing what I just read out of Psalms, they're liars. Read. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. We talked about that last week. Satan come at you very cunningly and very politely. He offers you your heart's desires. Not even recognizing that, hey, there's a catch to this thing. Okay? Let's go. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Destruction. Forever getting tormented to hell. Okay? Let's pre -sell. The book of Matthew. Now, right this, sorry, go ahead. Get it. Chapter 23. We're not going to read that, but go ahead. Verse 1 through 28. Y'all read that on your own, but what it, what it really is, it's the Messiah saying he's really quoting from uh, what we read from Jeremiah concerning the religious leaders of his time. Showing you that they are not of the Most High. He called them venomous vipers, hypocrites. The Most High, I mean, Yahshua said, do not, he says, he says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Beware of the doctrines of the religious leaders. It's a fool with a bunch of lies, man's traditions. They have put down again the commandments of God and taught you what they want you to believe and do. After their own heart, according to the scriptures. Next month, the October something, you got Halloween coming. I want y'all to show me in the Bible where Halloween is. It's not. But all you people in the churches will be just you know, dressing your children up, trick or treating. You no. Know. See, they still trying to breathe by it. They said that they won't be in, in devil costumes. Trunk or treat. It's called it's Holy Week. No, so they do trunk or treat. They open up their trunks, pour the candy in there, and the kids come to the candy. That's how they get away from saying it's Halloween. 
See, Satan comes as an angel of light. He makes it very enticing for your children to cast you and your children into hell. The Most High never commanded us to follow or worship the dead. Never. So now you're teaching your children the same traditions of the devil. And then they grew up, have children, and now we have a community, a generation of what we have right now. Yes. Get that your mom. I just said that. You said it yourself. Okay? Now, the, the fun part. Again, you're going to visit this book right here. Right? The, the world's great religions. Now, check it out. The title will tell you what is what. Huh? Huh? Battery life. Battery life. Okay, we're going to go and get this thing. I don't know how it's doing that. Oh, you know what? No, I'm not spot on. Let's keep moving. So, they're telling you where religion comes from. The world. Okay? The world. So, Satan is the god of the world. It's his religions. <coughs> Get it? The world, the world, great religions. So that means there's multiple religions, which means there's multiple gods, which be in harmony with the Bible. There's many gods. Okay? But well, let's get it. So, what I'm going to do is go down through this thing and again, read the beliefs of the daughters of the whore. Roman Catholic Church. We're going to start with their beliefs first and then go down to some of the daughters. See? Even though the daughters rebelled against their mother. Like, for example, my father, right? He didn't raise me, but I'm a lot like my father. Regardless if he raised me or not. So whether I'm with my father or not, there's some things I just can't get rid of. I'm from my father's loins. My mama here saying, yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look like him. Act like him. You know what I'm saying? So, although these daughters have not been a part of their mother for over 500 years, they still have a lot of the attributes of their mother that they took with them. All the churches today are actually truthfully called, guys, what name they call themselves? Protestants. Okay? Protestants. They rebelled, they protested against their mother. Okay? So, but it's four five things that I want to touch on today. It's the four things I got to touch on because it's the stamp of the Roman Catholic's authority over the daughters of her. They all left their mother keeping what, let me, let me read this. The Romans gave birth, these are my words from the research I've done. The Romans, see, gave birth to the Trinity. There's no Trinity in the Bible. We're going we're gonna to cover that thing in a minute. Now, is there a Father, Mother, a Father, Holy Spirit, and Son? Yes, it is, but it's not a Trinity. We're going to cover that real quick. Also from the, Roman, from the Romans came the Immaculate Birth. Okay? The Immaculate Birth is not in the Bible. That, we're going to read what y'all was taught to believe, and we're going to break that thing down and show you that that's a lie. Okay? There's no such thing of an Immaculate Birth. For those who don't know what an Immaculate Birth is, that means that Mary would have had a child without the assistance of a man. Okay? If that was the case, the child would be called a demigod, which is the same act the fallen angels did aforetime that are awaiting judgment right now. They came down, violated, had sex with women, 
and had children called Nephilim who were giants. The Most High despised that because he has not commanded angels to mix with men. So why would the Most High do the same and then punish his angels for doing for following him? Is God unrighteous? God forbid. Which means no. Okay? Also, the Romans changed again the Sabbath. And we're going to read again their own words. Mouthful of blasphemy. They have. Saying that they have more authority. The church, they have more authority than God, than the Bible. And the way you can tell that is because they changed the Sabbath from the seventh day to the first day. That's why y'all go to church on Sundays. Because the Romans changed the day, not the most high. Okay? In 321 AD. Also, the Romans ended the celebration of God's feast. Which he commanded the children of Israel, not the Romans, to follow his feast days, which are also Sabbaths, throughout all your generations, throughout all your dwellings. For anyone who wants to seriously say, well, we can only do that in Jerusalem, the Most High said, do it. He know he put you in captivity. He prophesied it. it throughout all your generations, throughout all your dwellings, his feast days are Sabbaths. Holy convocations. Okay? They ended, you know, for their followers, God's feast and his laws. God never said don't follow his laws. The Romans did. And a lot of churches teach grace plus faith equals salvation. I pray we have no time to get to that thing. Matter of fact, I just quoted. I just quoted it earlier. If grace plus faith equals salvation, what do you have grace from? What is the Most High going to judge you by? I just read to you the Book of Hebrews, chapter ten, verse twenty. I just quoted it, chapter twenty-six, verse thirty-one, it's talking about if you are here willfully sinning under Christ, there's no grace for you. So if there's sin, there must be a law established. Where well, there's no law, there's no sin. Okay? So how can you sin under Christ and receive greater damnation than you would have under Moses' law if the law was done away with? Okay? And Paul himself says in Romans chapter 3, verse 31, I think it is, so should we make so do we make God's law void? God forbid. The same man that y'all use when well, y'all misquote Paul, because even Peter says that some of Paul's writings are hard to understand to the unlearned. Especially it's extremely difficult for someone who don't know the law or do not live the law to understand a strange thing. You must live the law to understand what Paul is saying. The same man is telling you, so do we make, talking about grace, because we have grace, do we make void the law? He said no. So Paul was not saying the law is done away with. Okay? What Paul was saying is that we don't have to sacrifice animals anymore. And we can't stone people if they willfully break the law, because the Messiah is going to judge them. He gave them grace because many of us Grew up in, with the Romans, learned the way of the Romans. So we need time to, you know, listen to this message and make it more like it. To come back to the laws and commandments of the Most High. So he had woke, he has wakened, he been waking people up according to his own will to give them opportunity under grace. It's his grace that's caused you to breathe today. We're going to read the scripture and when Moses I said he had not commanded no man to do wickedly nor given him a license to sin. Okay? We're going to read that. But let's go. Let's get what the Roman Catholics believe. It says, the Roman Catholics acknowledge, remember, listen to what the dog, we're going to start with the mother whore, then get to the other whores. Okay? 
It says, the Roman Catholics, they acknowledge the Trinity. God is three persons. One nature, okay? Original sin, the fall of Adam, which has affected all men. Incarnation. So it's saying that God's son made men. But they're saying that, that God came down as a form of a man. Okay? That's, a, that's blasphemy. Redemption. Christ's sacrificial death on the cross, I believe in that, specially venerate Virgin Mary, who, whose immaculate conception preserved her from original sin. That's not nowhere in the Bible. Matter of fact, real quick, I'm going to read to you what virgin really means. Because in English, English language, we've been taught that virgin only means someone who has never, uh, you know, done the act before. You got it, Ty? Okay, hey, 600. Got it. Is this yours? The first one? Yep. It was over there. <laughs> Virgin, a young unmarried woman. See, a young unmarried woman. Mary was a young unmarried woman. Okay, let's get it. A young woman of maritable age. A young woman of marital, marital age. So when you read the Bible when it says dam damsel or maid mm -hmm. or virgin, it's talking about the same thing. It's because of your English language, it has you in confusion, thinking that she did not have intercourse with her husband, Joseph. But we're going to break that thing down in a minute. Let's go. Mm -hmm. A young woman of maritable age, whether married or not. So you can be married and still be a virgin. Mm -hmm. And you know you can not be married if you don't consummate it. Mm -hmm. See the, the, the power in words? Either it can free you or hold you captive in confusion. Mm -hmm. See? Was not talking about Mary has never been with her husband. Matter of fact, we're going to let the angels tell you the truth. Okay? Angels of the most high, not the fallen ones. But let's get it. So let's break this thing down. I'm going to go a little bit far. Let's get what they also believe. Salva salvation is by God's grace. Right? Again, grace did not replace the law of the Most High. Grace gave all people an opportunity to repent and sin no more. Yes. Right? Grace destroyed the penalty of death. Okay? You broke the law. You got stoned to death. Literally. And the witness of two or more. Okay? Grace gave a person under Moses' law who had no opportunity of repenting, such as an adulterer, a fornicator. There was no opportunity for redemption, for repenting. You got stoned if you get caught. You broke the Sabbath. You died. You was a homosexual. You died. By the community, the community stoned you. Okay? But under grace, you're not stoned anymore. The Most High is allowing you, and this is the love of God. Okay? God really is a God of love and compassion. He's the opposite to disobedience. So, but because he loved us so much, he gave us an opportunity. But those persons who I just named, you get an opportunity to save themselves from destruction. See? He said he would give us teachers. He would send out his shepherds. And if one of those persons was the sheep who have ears to hear, they have an opportunity to escape the wrath of the Most High God. That's what Paul means by grace. Not that you got a license to sin. Also, damnation is man's fault. By rejection of grace. That's true. If you hear the word of the most high, you deny it, it's your fault. Damnation awaits you. See, they have some truth in this thing too. Uh, Satan come an angel of light. He they give him a little bit of good. Man's final state after death will be in heaven. That's not in the Bible. Nowhere. Okay? Man's final state. See, this is from the Roman Catholic Church. Not from the Bible. 
It never says you die and go to heaven. You can't find that. Okay? For which purgatory purifies souls. Now, where, I mean, I read the Bible ten times, y'all. I have never read this in the Bible. Purgatory? So you go to heaven and get purified? The Bible says that that, it, that uh, huh? That it is what well, it says that uh, it's appointed to man to, to, to die once, and then the judgment. But you don't be wicked on earth, go to heaven, get cleansed, and oh no, wait, wait, wait. Then, then it says, or hell, eternal time, eternal torments. So what is hell for in eternal torments if you get purified in heaven? That's kind of contradictory, you know. I mean, I mean, everybody can be wicked on earth, go to heaven, get clean. Ain't no judgment because everybody clean now, right? Confusion. And the reason I'm glad I said confusion because that about to throw me off. But what I want people, the most I want people to understand, what I'm about to read to you, read right now to y'all is called confusion. And guess what? A higher, a sure higher, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Is not the author of confusion. So therefore, this is not of him, according to our title today. Okay? This is not of the Most High. He never said these things. This is man's own heart. Man's doctrine, not the Most High's. At man's bodily resurrection and the second coming, Christ will judge all men. Who? The same people say the law is done away with saying that Christ is going to judge men. Well, the law, what were you judging with? Wow. Oh, you was a good person, although you killed five people. You was a good person, although you, you know, you, you know, you broke God's laws. Yeah, you go to purgatory, yeah, I'm going to clean you up in heaven. Right? Okay. Let's get to the Lutherans. Another, uh, Let's, let's get to the Eastern Orthodox. I don't know who these people even are. But anyway, the Trinity is one of God's. Trinity is one God in three persons. See, it comes from the, their mother. Where Roman Catholics believe the Holy Spirit proceeds from God, the Father, and Christ, the Son, Orthodox believe the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, proceeds directly from God, the Father. It's a historical dis disagreement. See, this makes our protest. They disagree with that. They, they believe the Trinity and all that stuff. This one fact, they didn't believe they mama on this one. Virgin Mary is revered, but without accepting her immaculate conception. See, they don't believe that mess either. Even though they took the Trinity, see, it's always something you get from your mother, right? They believe salvation either from original sin or breaking salvation either from original sin or breaking of God's law, comes only through the church. Faith in Christ, whose atonement removes sin and good works, at death souls go to heaven, hell, or immediate, immediate state, which are real places and state, of, and state of mind. So it can be a real place or a state of mind. Choose one. Last judgment will be at Christ's second coming. Now, my favorite, the Baptist. Okay? Now, get, uh, you know what? No, let me keep going. Yes. The 10 Hail Marys? They give me one ten in a thousand. You know, you can hail Mary Monty, you're going to be right in hell, you know, with ceramics. Okay? Um, look at the Baptist. The Baptists have no formal creed. Look up the word creed. In the, uh, just directly. Yeah, it's creed. Time. English. Look at creed. That's what it's written. So, all my Baptist people, listen to this confusion that you've been deceived with. They saying you have no formal creed. Okay? We're going to get what the word creed means. Hello. Got it. A statement of the basic beliefs of a religion. So you don't have no statement, no doctrine of the basics of your belief. When the Bible 
Check this out. One more thing. Good. An idea or set of beliefs that guide the actions of a person or group. Read that again. A, an idea or set of beliefs that guide the actions of a person or group. So you don't stand on nothing. This is why all your... I just want to say that's real deep to be a Bible-believing...